haven't made a new video in a while had uh, some recent life changes here made a new job on the west coast sold my house in like three weeks moved lived in a trailer for a month it's been some crazy times but hopefully uh we'll have some good times now definitely forgot how hard it is to shoot a video man it's it's awkward well hopefully i'll get used to it again and hopefully it gets less awkward as time goes but anyways the channel is pretty much going to change as uh that build goes we're going to follow the build i'll do some reviews some how to's how to install stuff some reviews of some smart home stuff i want to integrate in the new house um not going to be doing any car projects for a while simply because there's nowhere to do it but i guarantee i think this new garage is going to make some great videos so uh let's get to what this video is about so this first video is going to be um some of the tips that I would give uh, as far as looking for a lot to build a house, designing a house, really figuring out what it is you want, what style you like. Uh, as easy as getting a cookie cutter house is, I just didn't like it. Mostly because my lot's really narrow, so my choices are very limited. And uh, there's not many 4-2 houses with a 4-car garage out there, so I really didn't have a choice. And I've always wanted to design you know, a house from scratch, man. You're playing with Legos as a kid, you know, just making stuff since I was little. And here we are going to build the biggest thing I've ever built. So um, let's go over some of the stuff I've done, some of the stuff I've learned, and what I would recommend. And, of course, right when I decided to start shooting this video, the barge is over there moving a new pole. And we got an airboat going on back there. So if you hear anything running back there, it's just the airboat taking people back and forth to the barge. All right, so the first thing is I recommend finding your lot first. You don't want to design a house and then figure out what you design doesn't fit. So there's no point in designing and then finding a lot unless you're going to find a lot based on what you design. But in my case, I wanted to be on the water, so the lot kind of designed me. The house isn't uh, exactly the shape I really wanted to design. Personally, I love uh, the style of like an H house but I just don't have the width here. These lots are narrow and long, and an H house, you kinda need more of a squared off lot. That's not what I have here. I believe the lot is uh, 84 by 170, so it, it's not gonna fit an H house. So I kinda designed uh, that funky Tetris shape that I'll show you guys later on. But anyways, some of the tips for picking out a lot of what I'd recommend is trying to get something that's cleared. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive in the beginning, but it's cleared you don't have to especially here on the west coast we have the gopher tortoises scrub jays i mean there's so much little environmental things that could add cost time all that stuff and clean, clearing a lot isn't cheap and you still need permits and they could kind of tell you what tree you could cut what tree you can't cut or you if you want to cut that tree you're gonna have to pay a bunch of money so getting a cleared lot i believe really helps the process as far as time and probably frustration because uh, i got to admit, it is a pretty frustrating process. The other thing I'd try to recommend, I know it's pretty tough to find a lot that previously had a house, but if you could find a lot that previously had a house, you will save some money on impact fees, so just keep that in mind when you are buying a property. You know, that, that roughly saved me about 6500 to about $7,000 because this house, or this property did have a house on it before it was damaged and Charlie and the previous owner bought it and knocked it down. Another thing a lot of people don't do when just buying a lot is uh, purchasing title insurance when you do buy it. Um, the person I purchased this from almost convinced me not to do it and the title company actually refused to do it without title insurance and thank God because apparently after Charlie or whatever they foreclosed on the house and some kind of paperwork got misplaced and the payoff letter to one bank didn't reach the other bank. So the property still showed a lien. If I was not to get that title insurance, I would have never found out until the day I had to sell a house and you know, God knows how many years that is after trying to find that paperwork or get a hold of that kind of information probably would be impossible. And then you don't know what kind of legal issues you're gonna face at that point. You know, that would that would really suck. Uh, he had a clean title, you know, clean deed in his name, but you know, along the paperwork line somewhere, something was missed and the title insurance did take care of that. So definitely don't listen to people, you know, it's a thousand dollars, I think it is, 
don't save the money. It's, it's good insurance to make sure that that title is 100% clean, you know, that you're not gonna have any problems in the future, and it's ready to go. The last thing you wanna do is invest a ton of money building a house and find out the property itself has some kind of issue later on down the road when you're trying to sell. So definitely get some title insurance. Um, next is gonna be about the design, drafting, all that kind of information. What I would recommend a lot is sketch a lot of kind of styles of what you like, go on Google, get a lot of different styles, look at stuff, look at what you like, look at what styles you like, look at different designs, see how you could incorporate all of them. You know, maybe you get a little bit from one, put it to the other, put it to the other, and you come up with your own style. You know, you don't want to copy nobody's house, so try to come up with your own style. And um, when you get that sketch and you get some rough ideas, draw it out on a piece of paper, get a ruler and just start putting some lines down, try to make things a scale. You know, maybe you could use centimeters for feet or, or whatever just come up with a scale so everything's proportion you don't want to draw something and then find out you know that, that it's just not gonna work so just when you're when you're sketching when you're drawing make sure you're using some kind of scale to keep everything proportion to each other and uh, once you do come out with that sketch put it somewhere you're gonna see it every day put it on the table you know somewhere on the kitchen somewhere you're gonna see it every day you know you might think it's a great idea today but tomorrow next week a month you never know what it's gonna turn into. So uh, just put it somewhere where you see it every day, make sure it's really what you like. Sometimes seeing it every day, you go, you know what, that piece right there, I don't like it, I gotta change it. And then you just change it, do another sketch, put them both, put them both up. You know, see which one you like both. Make sure that that sketch you did that you changed, that's what you like. Cause sometimes your gut feeling, your first one really is it. But every once in a while you gotta make a couple little changes. You know, um, from my first sketch to this sketch, really is about the same the only reason i did change it was strictly because of the height of the roof i was getting and it would have been i think like 50 something feet straight a roof i mean the amount of water in a heavy rainstorm will be ridiculous falling off that roof so i kind of split it a little bit more in half and um that's pretty much what i recommend from there and then once you do get a sketch you know it, i mean it looks okay when you draw it on a piece of paper but see if you get some kind of software what I ended up doing, uh, I got pretty good at Fusion 360. Just design the house on Fusion 360. That way it's all crisp, clean lines. And that way you can come up with your color scheme. You could uh, get your design out and then print it out, print a couple of them out, and then get some color pencils, old school, like you're in school, and just color the house with different colors that you think you would like, or different designs, different patterns, uh, wooden grains, maybe some stone. I mean, you can't color it to look like stone, but you could just put the color of the stone you want Maybe you could put some lines so you can see that it is stone and it's not just a painted wall, which is what I did with the wood. And uh, I'll show you guys later. I actually have two designs. I'm not sure which side I want to put the wood on. So uh, when you see it later, maybe drop a comment. See if you like uh, the one with the wood grain on the left or the one with the good wood grain on the right. So um, once you do decide finally what you want, there's an app that's free. It's called Room Sketcher. It's pretty easy to use. Uh, you just kind of put your dimensions in and you go playing with it. And then you could pick furniture, you could put furniture in there to make sure that you have enough room. Pretty much what I did when I uh, decided the sizes for all the rooms, I kind of measured my old house. I was perfectly fine with that house. I really didn't want anything bigger. It worked for us great. So I kind of just measured everything to get a rough idea of what size you really need for the house. Cause it's kind of tough just coming out with it out of your brain. You know, you could think 15 by 15 is a lot. You could think 15 by 15 is a little bit. I mean, it all depends what you're used to and what you like. So try to find something you like, measure that space, and then go designing that space in Room Sketcher. And you could move walls around. You could put furniture to see how it's going to look. Room Sketcher is a great app, and I'll show you later um, the pictures and stuff that I came up with on Room Sketcher. Now, once you come up with all that, you could look for a drafter. And this is where I ran into a lot of problems here. Uh, I called a bunch of drafters, and right now we're just in crazy times in Florida. I mean, so many people are moving here. It's, it's crazy. Just to get the survey done on this property, it was four months for just somebody to come out and say, hey, your property goes from here to here. So uh, drafters are pretty backed up as well. So I called maybe four or five drafters. Everybody's super busy. Found this one drafter that was gun ho He... Uh, Seemed like he was ready to go, ready to hit it. He's gonna turn it out quick. Promised me the world, but was a thousand bucks more. But yeah, you know, I said, you know what, thousand bucks. If this guy gets it done in 30 days, like he claims it does, even if he gets it done in 45, 
I'm good with it. Because everybody else is telling me three, four months. So, I signed with them, gave them my deposit, told them everything. We had a Zoom meeting. Oh, my brother just took a shit. All right, so I got the umbrella back. Oh, fuck, so hard to get started again. So that Zoom meeting, you know, he agreed to everything. Yeah, we could do it. However, it's not gonna be a dollar forty-five anymore. It's gonna be a dollar sixty-five a square foot, simply because of some of the design elements I had, and it was gonna take a lot of engineering. Whatever, I was good with it because he did do the drafting, he did the architectural, structural engineering. So he claimed that I was gonna have a plan ready to go to permitting in thirty days. That was June 2nd, here we are, September 7th. Just got him back today, and just going back and forth with this guy, I mean, it was just a nightmare. Make sure, even though you talk about it in that Zoom conference, which, honestly, I never recommend it. If, if they don't wanna meet with you in person, you know, I thought it was because of COVID, and okay, I get it, whatever. If they don't wanna meet with you in person, don't do it, man. You could you could just get somebody's vibe in, the per in person that you cannot get over the phone or on a zoom meeting you can see if he's organized you can see if he has an office i don't even know if this guy's doing this shit out of his garage you know so if they don't have an office they don't want to have a personal meeting i highly recommend not to do it uh go with somebody that will there there, there has to be out there um but anyways yeah he he said you know because one thing i did do here i didn't design trusses just because of how backed up trusses are so i wanted to go with joyce which is kind of just a pre-engineered piece that kind of has figures of what it will hold and he said he could do it. And uh, we talked about it, text about it. And about three weeks later, he tells me, hey, where's my trust design? I go, man, you're going to do it. And uh, went back and forth. Now I had to go look through the messages. He's saying, oh, it's not in the contract. I had to look through the messages where he said, yeah, I will do it. It's no big problem. No big deal. I got it. So make sure that that contract, I mean, I would have never thought, you know, you think when you have a Zoom meeting with somebody, uh, they kind of go by what you guys talked about. But when I bring up the Zoom meeting, he told me, oh, you expect me to remember everything? I mean, it's kind of the purpose of a meeting. Maybe write some stuff down, bud. But uh, anyways, yeah, just make sure that contract has it in there because if it doesn't, you kind of don't have any legal right. And uh, pretty much ended up being like $1,000 more with the change order for the patio and whatever. I don't know, whatever charges he wanted to add on there. But I mean, at that point, he, he's got you. You know, I'm a month month and a half two months in what am i gonna say no get on a three month wait list with somebody else to wait three months again i mean he's got you so you gotta pay the money you gotta pay whatever he tells you to do and it is what it is but uh just lesson learned you know definitely also another thing when you get a contract with somebody put an end date on it you know because if you don't have an end date they could just keep dragging dragging and dragging and dragging and dragging and let's say i did decide to come with a draft another drafter and then he comes up later and he wants me to pay him the final money you know if if there was no end date, technically I was the one that violated the contract. So you definitely want to put an end date on your contracts, of whatever you sign. And I already talked to the home builder about it. I want an end date because if anything was to happen and you get another contractor, you know, if you don't have that end date, technically you're probably the one that violated the contract. And I don't know how any of that will work, but I don't want to find out. But yeah, pick an end date, write everything in the contract and, uh, that's pretty much all I recommend as to what has happened so far. I'm hoping later on today or sometime this week, we meet up with Mike from Golf Home Builders. He is going to be my builder. I uh, really liked him, met him, met him at a house he was building. I like his one-on-one -on -one service. It's him and his wife. He has a group, group of guys. You know, it's not a big office. I do want to do some stuff, so he's allowing me to do that, and he's working with me with that that a lot of bigger builders won't even do. You know, they want to do it and they don't want you to be involved. They're telling me that if I was on the property, I'd be trespassing while the build is going on. So I don't want any of that. Mike seems like a pretty good guy. We'll see how it goes. Um, and that's pretty much it of uh, what's going on with uh, what I recommend and where I'm at so far. So we are ready for permitting. Hopefully we'll be moving forward. And I guess I could show you around the property now. I'll show you some pictures of uh, what it looked like before. I had a ton of pictures and videos of all the work being done on this property. And I was just waiting to get my plans done so I can make a video worthwhile instead of just a bunch of small clips. And I walked into the pool the other day, ruined the phone. Can't get it out because it's locked. So it is what it is, man. Thank God I post a lot of pictures on Facebook and I was able to get some pictures off Facebook to show you what this property looked like when I bought it the day I came by 
a couple some small stuff I did and I got some videos and stuff that I'll take now and show you what I've done so far so uh, let's get to that so here's what it looked like the day I first drove by and saw the for sale by owner sign and some other pictures of the property the day I got it and this is what she looks like now I removed the uh, large oak that was here in the center it had a bunch of rot in it from I guess previous cuts that they've made and there was a small oak over there that was just suffocated by this oak and it was all growing on one side I hope the uh, sable palm comes out pretty good because they did drop a pretty big branch on it when they were trimming it so it looks a little beat up but I think she'll come through and the other thing I had to do after I removed all the trees and roots and I also got it derooted I didn't do stump grinding because I didn't want any problems digging or anything like that so then I had to bring in a bunch of fill because I guess from bringing all the equipment and stuff and in this general area right here was probably where the septic tank was and I guess from the heavy equipment running over it, it made a big old ditch and every time it rained it would flood the grass so I brought in two truck loads just kind of evened it out a little bit more and this is where the house was so I had a bunch of uneven spots in the back it had a pool so it also had another dip there from when they removed it and they just didn't compact the soil and then you can see that large oak in the center is also gone because that oak also had some poor cuts done to it and it had a huge hole it looked like the tree from Winnie the Pooh so uh, we got that taken out just another thing for you guys to know because the county tells you no I called about removing all these oaks and they said no you got to get the permits we have to approve it we have to decide the damage for ourselves and uh, I talked to the tree guy that came over and he's like no there's a new Florida bill 1159 that with a certified arborist they say that they deem the tree unsafe or dangerous and you're allowed to cut it with no permits no approvals so you just pay that guy for the letter and he takes them down and that's it you don't have to pay the county nothing so don't let them lie to you do your research look up bill 1159 and you'll be fine i still have this large oak here which this oak's in great shape they never really messed with it and this is an actual live oak the other ones were lori oaks i also planted these uh little plants on the bottom to cover up some of the roots because cutting the grass here as you can see is kind of tough with the roots popping out so i put some plants around it so they can start growing in so by the time the house is done they'll look nice and this tree right here will give me enough tree points for my whole property and there's my staghorn that i brought from my old house also and that is uh pretty much all the progress we got going on so far so stay tuned we'll get the uh permits going and hopefully we start getting some foundation set some block set a roof on there and we'll follow the whole process and uh, i'll show you some pictures of why i love this lot the sunrises are beautiful look at that just nice and peaceful quiet You go right out there, take you to the Peace River, which will take you to the Gulf. We've got a little Gasparet Island. We'll ride up the river. We'll go to Peace River Campgrounds. This has been my setup for today because I moved and I can't find any of my phone holders. So I got a step stool, radio, a fan, and a binder. And the umbrella that keeps falling over. Another thing I did, I filled in between the two seawalls here. It was just a gap so my neighbor's yard and my yard were washing out from in there going through here down into the river so in the sea walls there was kind of like a u shape so i slid those pavers in there like a form and there you can see i put a pvc with some stainless bolts into the other sea wall and that formed up and then just poured the inside full of concrete and it still washes out a little bit but it's a lot better I'll show you the other side as well 
on this side for some reason I guess when they did the sea walls back in the day there's about three feet of my neighbor's sea wall in my property I guess they got it staked wrong because that's my stake right there and this is the seawall of the neighbor which is lower than mine by about two feet so pretty much all in this area was just all washing out and that's why you could see it kind of made like a beach here of how much fills washed out so I did the same thing put the pavers in there made the form filled it with concrete and then I made these steps and most of this sand is still washing out it's just the fill that I put under the rocks so once it keeps going in I keep filling it with rocks and I'll just keep putting more rocks and eventually it should all be rocks and stop washing out and that's pretty much it for the seawall water area of what I've done so far here's the machine they use to cut the weeds in the water and this is the arm and trailer they use to pull the weeds out of the water here you can see I was using the four wheeler to take all the rocks out that apparently they just kept throwing in the river. There was a lot of big rocks in there. Another thing I did to the dock area, as you can see the whole seawall looked like this and the whole dock looked like that. I pressure cleaned it all, added some lights, I gotta buy more because they didn't reach all the way. But I invented something with a sump pump, generator pressure washer setup because I don't have any water out here yet. That's how I pressure washed it. I pressure washed it all with the river water. Came out pretty good. It's already coming back a little bit. But you can see this little solar lights there. They light up blue. They look pretty cool. I got some pictures of what they look like at night. And there's the rest of them. And then I added these cleats here on the back side of the dock. Spring loaded little cleats. Because usually the wind's coming this way. So you could tie up the jet skis here and they'll just kind of float in this little area here and you don't have to worry about them bumping against the dock over there just if we're going to spend the day once we move here we'll probably get some floating docks and we'll put the boat on the lift you can see here after we cleaned out all the weeds it's all pretty clean there's still some stubs left that you have to wait to die because they don't pull them over here there's a couple more there's a couple more that are growing back that I'm gonna have to pick up and uh, recut them there but it looks much better pretty much look like that but bigger so uh, that's pretty much it I'll show you some of the pictures of the designs let me know if you like the design more of the wood grain on the left or the right and I'll show you some of the pictures of the room sketcher how I did the rooms you could even get 3d prints of the bathrooms and stuff like that all right so here we are in room sketcher this is what it looks like <clears throat> so you design all your exterior walls then you start moving rooms around and you can really play with it and uh, that kind of helps you you know get the shape that you want your house to be another neat little feature about this is you grab this little camera let's say you place it here turn it around you can kind of get a rough idea what your house is going to look like in the inside and you come over here take snapshot and then you can click here to enlarge it and there you get a rough idea you know what your house will look like there you can see the doors open but you could open and close the doors and everything so that's kind of the kitchen dining room layout uh for example we could move it on over move it to the bathroom and you get an idea what the bathroom is going to look like it takes snapshot it thinks for a little bit you hit bigger and you'll get a rough idea you know what the bathroom is going to look like <clears throat> with a different kind of finish you could chip pick finishes color walls flooring you could you could pick a lot of little things to get a rough idea and you could even hit here you could buy some credits and it'll give you a 3d photo and uh, I'll show you what those look like they just come out a little bit better quality so here is the 3d photo for the kitchen like you can see it even you can see the terrace out there and everything even the like stove has reflections I mean it's pretty good quality so that's pretty much what the kitchen is gonna look like 
and then you can figure out you know your uh cabinet sizes because you could put everything in there and then you could go online price out your cabinets which i highly recommend doing that also just make sure you know you're not going to go over your allowances because they only give you a certain amount of money for certain things so you want to make sure whatever the builder's quoting you is going to fit what you want because they're probably pricing you the cheapest stuff for example garage they gave me an allowance of like thirty five or four thousand dollars for both and each door because i want insulated with windows is going to be about five or six thousand so right there that could have been you know probably an eight or ten thousand dollar undercut that i would have had to come up with later here is the hallway bathroom 3d rendering it's much smaller but you kind of get the idea And actually, I don't think this is the 3D generated one. I think this is the regular one. And that is the 3D generated one. You can kind of tell the difference. That one's a little bit more pixelated. And this one's a little bit more realistic. You could even see in the mirror, it has a reflection of what the mirror would see at the angle. And I added a little hamper. There's still plenty of space. I mean, it's pretty cool what you could do with this app to give you a really good understanding, you know, what size everything's gonna be. And for the garage, you could even pick like to put cars in there so you can see how much space you're gonna have. You could scale, you could scale everything. You could scale the beds to the size of the furniture you want. You could scale the cars. Like that's just a regular pickup, but I scaled it to the size of my dually. Um, these lawnmowers here, I scaled them to the side of my side-by-side -side of my four-wheeler to see how everything will fit, make sure there's enough space, make sure there's gonna be space for workbenches and tools. So it is really a neat app out here. You can see the patio and, and you could designate every space. You could pick your windows. You could really get a lot of information of how everything's gonna look, you know? Here's our uh, master bedroom. You can see with the French door and the bed set up. I mean, it's, it's a pretty neat app and it's really not that hard to do. So there it is. And when you buy the credits, I think it's like 20 bucks or something for the subscription. You could like click a spot and it'll do like a 360 and it'll show you everything so it's pretty pretty neat little app if uh you'd like tinkering with stuff like that i'm sketcher and uh now i'll go to the outside house sketches here you can see this was after my final sketch i measured everything out from room sketcher put it all the dimensions in fusion 360 kind of made a 3d model of the house and then put it in 2d dimension to get these printouts and then you're just able to color them you know how you want it <clears throat> so here's what I'm still debating if I'm gonna do the wood grain on the left or the wood grain on the right I kind of like this design which is my second design it just to me looks a little bit cleaner and uh, this is what the back patio would look like I got a big casement window over the top so it'll let plenty of Sun a little slanted roof I believe it's a 12 or 14 foot slider got a six foot slider in our bedroom and you can see that's the side with the garage there. And this is the other side of the house. At first I did want to put some windows in the area between the roofs. But uh, after they designed it, I mean the window was going to be like a 10 inch big window. And I just didn't think it was worth the cost or effort. And you can see here like, you know, I designed the uh, stained tongue and groove uh, fascia boards or soffits, sorry. <clears throat> and that way your builder gets a better idea of exactly what you want also. And you get a better idea of what it is you want and another thing I recommend is buying some of the material you plan on using and right there that's the entrance of my doorway in the rental I look at this stuff every single day to make sure I still like it so you know just get a couple different samples of the colors you're thinking about using some of the different tiles you're thinking about using that's a cabinet sample there for the kitchen just put it somewhere where you're gonna look at it every day make sure that you like the style you're picking and uh, that's pretty much it for that. Follow along for the build of the house. Thank you. Make sure to like and subscribe.